six jumps, seven jumping efforts to begin, and then five of them as part of the jump off with a 33 second optimum time. The first horse and rider to go, number 2005, Aiken Prep, ridden by Emma Eyre. And this horse truly is a war horse, Aiken Prep, uh, 62 starts. And um, just recently retired, most recent start was um, August 15th of last year. 62 starts, four wins, 10 years old. And 240,000 so, in earnings. Yeah, so after all those starts, ready to come out here and show us a nice jumping round so far. Yes, he's very ready. Uh, you can tell this is a workhorse, really likes a job, really enjoying the jumping. You can see he's green and not totally sure how to do all the things, losing a little bit of momentum over some of those jumps. But, oh, man, the knees that he has, man, there's a lot of potential there. He seemed to get to that penultimate jump right there a little late, but he cleared it all the same. Yeah, he's thinking. He's using his brain a lot to figure out how all this is working out. We've been talking about type and horses that you pick out, and just an absolutely gorgeous, lovely horse is, is built very well for for show jumping, but this is one when I first saw him come out, I was like, oh, is this one also in dressage? <laughs> mm. So this horse, the previous horses we've seen in eventing, four years old, this is a 10-year-old. This horse also events and most recently competed in August at Weridaka at training. So when, Ashley, you have a horse coming off the track, if they're four or if they're 10, is there a different trajectory you take as far as what level you might approach them for, regardless of the experience that they may have heading into that new discipline? You're not going to like my answer, but it's yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm married to you. That's, that's the answer I was expecting. He's used to it, but I'd like for you to explain that, Ashley. <laughs> yes, there's a lot there. <laughs> With a young horse, you're going to want to go a little bit slower, especially a four-year-old. They're still developing that they need, so you don't want to take a young horse and just shoot them right up to training in their first year. Um, also, with a green horse, if their minds aren't steady and settled, you don't want to shoot them up to training in their fourth, first year. But if you have a really super talented young horse that is very, very bored at doing beginner novice, right? Move it up to novice. If you have a really talented young horse that's very bored at novice and is scoring well and placing well, then you then you move it up. But with a war horse who loves a job, who's obviously had time to develop, uh, a big talented horse like that, they're not really going to show themselves until uh, novice or training. So with really? that specific horse, I, I see no issue with it and I'm not surprised at all. That was Aiken Prep and Emma Eyre kicking off the finalists for Show jumpers sponsored by XL Equine, a 10 year old war horse, 62 starts, also events, and has been competing at training level for eventing. Now, Aiken Prep and Emma Eyre listed at jumping 3 3 at the training level height that they've been doing in eventing competitions, and now we have a course adjustment to the three foot height. For the next horse, number 2299, Victor Show and Marina Yarbrough. And Ashley Wall, we have a moment and the course is being adjusted. And th that's one of the great things that this thoroughbred makeover allows is wherever the horses are at in their retraining, the riders can choose, hey, my horse 3'3", three, three, my horse 3' my horse 2'6", and, and that there is some adjustability in the jumping disciplines. This is where it takes a, a little bit of skill from the rider and, and horsemanship to know where their horse is, where um, they are going to show best and what they're really ready for. I was saying on, on the live stream that there's some horses that uh, are going to be really impressed with the 2-6 jump and jump it really big and, and uh, round and, and that's the level that they need to be at. But then there's some horses like Aiken Prep that came out and I don't think he would have shown very well over a, a two six course. The horse is big and impressive and uh, needs a little bit more to really show himself. And that is a, a good choice for a horse like that to choose a 
choose a higher jump. Uh, great thing about this competition is, is there's no edge that's gained or lost at doing a different height. Everything is scored exactly the same, and it's all on the potential you know, for the future of this horse uh, to show well in this discipline. And if your horse is ready to show that potential at two six, you show it two six. If your horse is ready at, at, at three foot, then you show it three foot. Um, and they're all scored equally. It's how to best present your horse and prepare them for their future. You know, it reminds me of some of the racehorses that you see um, win by a neck for maiden special weight, first time out, let's say. And then the next time they come back and they win by a neck again, allowance A other than, then they come back in a little stake and they win by a neck again. So they only do what they have to do, but they rise to that level every time. And so, like you're saying, so sometimes maybe they're jumping well at 2-6, but you know that they have a, in them to do more if you just put the jump a little higher. And I guess sometimes you just have to take that leap of faith and try it. Well, e even more so in that with the jumping is sometimes they're not jumping that well at 2-6 because they're just unimpressed with it. And you get a more quality jump and you get them educated better with something that actually means something to them. And that's all individuals. Humans are individuals, horses are individuals. They react differently to the same exact stimulation. So this is a great, great way to set it up that you get to choose what is the best stimulation for your horse. Absolutely. You're right, that natural athleticism that thoroughbreds have, sometimes when you put, say, a two foot jump in front of them, they're not sure how to process that. Then when you put a, say, two 11 foot jump in front of them, they're like, got it, that's what we were supposed <laughs> to, to be doing. And so now that the course has been adjusted to the three foot height, we have our next competitor, number 2199. Victor Show, ridden by Marina Yarbrough, competing in both show jumpers and show hunters this weekend. <laughs> Victor Show, a seven year old dark bay gelding, bred in Kentucky, raced in California, and Donna, this horse is a yearling. Uh, just looking at the breeding, drew, drew quite a bit of attention. Yeah, and, and that makes sense by Victor's cry out of a tail of the cat mare. Um, so the, the pedigree is certainly there. Um, and and he, he did manage one win from those 13 starts, but it looks like he's, uh, it looks like he's found his place here in in spite of the fact that he was sold for $200,000 at auction as a yearling. We're both, well, we're all fans of Natalie Voss Neville's the editor in chief of Pollock Report, and she wrote an article that if a horse doesn't necessarily live up to their expectations on the track, we can change that mentality that, that that's a disappointment. And now that's easier said than done for those of us who haven't invested the $200,000 for racehorse success. But if a horse isn't adept to be a racehorse, it's great that now there's so many more outlets afterwards that these horses can then go on to and, and show perhaps what was really inherently what they wanted to do all along. You know, I'll say one thing about that. Um, for people who paid $200,000 and upwards of $200,000 for a horse, they understand that what they're doing is treasure hunting and they're not <laughs> gonna find the treasure every time. And so sometimes they'll take the consolation prize <laughs> in seeing the horse go on. I mean, everybody's involved with this because they love horses. And so if somebody can afford to spend a million dollars on a horse doesn't mean that they don't also love horses. And if that horse isn't gonna pan out, they get that more of them aren't gonna work at a high level than are. And so it's nice to see them go on and do something that they enjoy. Uh, yeah, accepting that everything in horse racing is a gamble. And when you're buying a yearling, that's just as much of a gamble as picking a horse to, to bet two across. Ashley, these horses' jump returns are, are pretty polished, it looks like. I, I, that was a really good ride. Uh, it had turned, the horse got a little distracted, and she really made it very clear I need you to set back and listen and get on your hind end very easily could have been been a rail uh, but it was a really really nice recovery there Victor's show 
written by Marina Yarbrough and showing some polished jumper turns in the jump off. And as they exit the arena, the next horse to go, there will be a height adjustment, it looks like, from three feet to two feet six for number 2139, Jareer, ridden by McKenna O'Neill, a horse that's made the finals in show jumpers and in field hunters. And we're very grateful to get so much background information on these horses and bringing their racing careers forward to their new careers. And while we have a moment, this horse may have the most unique racing background of, of all the entrants. Jareer, a, a, a British bred, and uh, Donna, his trajectory, if we look at his past performances, I mean, it starts in England and and then just, and look at the job, I mean, the first jockey that rode him, Frankie DeTore. Uh, have, you, have you gotten to know Frankie in some of the, the work you've done for NBC? Yeah, everybody knows Frankie. Frankie's so gregarious, and uh, he's, I think he's won now the second most Breeders' Cups of any other jockey, maybe the third most. Uh, Mike Smith is the leading Breeders' Cup winner. John Blasquez could be second, and Frankie would be third. But, yeah, if you start off your career with Frankie DeTore aboard, you definitely have high hopes. And, you know, back to those um, sale prices early on, this is a horse who was purchased at $312,000. So it looks like they definitely had high hopes. And this is the... the um, what the the exchange from euro euro dollars to american dollars so i'm sure it was an even round number back back at the sale but um the exchange i just look at it and see a lot of money <laughs> exactly but uh yeah the horse went on to uh to do some decent things i mean we see that he was able to actually win at the racetrack in fact won two races earned forty seven thousand dollars i also find it interesting that the rider of this horse um, mckenna o'neill is a 14-year-old high school student, freshman in high school. And um, so looks like she acquired uh, Jarrera in December of 2020, and she hasn't had a lot of time to work with him. Yeah, um, Jarrera with a young rider, so starting out his racing career with Frankie DeTori and now starting out his show jumping and, and field hunting career with McKenna O'Neill. So the horse that ran on the flat in England, on the turf and the all-weather, then comes to the United States. And a bit of a different approach than some of these off-the-track thoroughbreds because this horse ran in National Steeplechase Association races. And so the horse not just competing on the flat but getting to go longer distances and getting to go over obstacles. But the one thing I've learned talking to people who've been involved in National Steeplechase riding, things like, okay, they have a fence that's in front of them they're ready to jump. It's a different, it actually may even be a bit harder because of how they jump the steeplechase fences compared to how they have to jump a, a, a show jumping fence. But, but I'm a big fan of, of the steeplechase races. He's also and made a nice progression from steeplechase to fox hunting to eventing. Exactly. So it seems like a really nice progression. I mean, just the fact that this horse has been all over the world. First home was in England and now at home here in Whitehall, Maryland, with young rider McKenna O'Neill. McKenna, we've been saying a lot of nice things about you, so a lot to live up to here. <laughs> but we're excited to see McKenna O'Neill and Jarir, the eight-year-old Bay Gelding from England, who competed in steeplechase races in the United States, and now a finalist for show jumping and field hunters. Fourteen years old, Ashley, you've been involved with horses all your life, as you have, Donna. Um, for those young people that are listening, what is that experience? I didn't get involved with horses until I was 30. What did I miss? <laughs> well, I'll, tell, I'll tell you a quick story. My first, uh, my first horse show, I was six years old, and it was lead line, and I was so proud of myself because I won a blue ribbon, and my sister was three years older than me. She was nine. So when I walked out of the arena and I said to my sister, I want a blue ribbon, she said, Donna, everybody wins a blue ribbon in the lead line. <laughs> I didn't realize that. <laughs> well, we have our son, Jace. He's eight. And 
<laughs> he uh, just did his first intro in, in a, a venting, which is two feet three. But as part of the course, one of the jumps was flagged for both intro and beginner novice. So he technically did a beginner novice fence. And he goes, I've done beginner novice all my life now. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, a freshman in high school, McKenna O'Neill, aboard Jareer. So there, Ashley, you saw the horse eager to the fence. How do you balance? You want them to go forward, but you also don't want them to be flat like a steeplechase horse would be to a fence. Well, you referenced this yesterday, your eternal frustration with the term of bigger, not faster. You want to be able to open them up and get... Uh, be able to lengthen and or shorten their stride at any given moment, but without letting them get uh, too f fast and flat. And if you see, this horse is a, a little different type than the other ones we saw, uh, not in a negative way by any means. He's doing a fantastic job on this course, but he's a bit shorter and stockier, a little bit shorter neck, uh, but real snappy with his legs and uh, pretty rideable, real, able to make those adjustments pretty well. Ashley, what does the rider do with their body to change that, that forward momentum into upward momentum to get that upward propulsion? Pull with your hands, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's one way, but you probably not get the response that you want. Uh, that's the natural reaction is to kind of pull to get them back, but that's going to give them something to lean on. So if you watch, what, if, if a good rider, when they get real forward and strong, you're going to see them sit up and become taller. And it also sounds, even saying it, sounds backwards. But if you have a horse that's going really forward and flat, not only do you need to be tall, but you have to add more leg. So for a novice, you think like, oh, legs mean go forward. Legs mean a whole lot more than, than go forward. So when you have a forward horse, to be able to get them to balance and use their core, you need to add leg. And that's what it means. There's always the joke, oh, trainer says add leg. Well, it's not just a stronger and stronger and stronger leg. There's different ways to it use it. It doesn't mean kick them. No, exactly. <laughs> that would not uh, help this horse. <laughs> I really like this horse to stride the way he managed that combination there. Uh, yeah, I think he's used to, to sitting up and doing some... Uh, uh, some steeple chasing. You really got to be able to, to to take care of yourself, and uh, he's doing a very good job of taking care of both himself and his young rider. Darir and McKenna O'Neill, and we'll see them back for the Field Hunter Finals after having their show jump around in this mega makeover finale for the class of 2021. Don and Ashley, we were both saying on the live broadcast how much we appreciated the adjustability of this horse and the ride that the young rider McKenna O'Neill was able to give communicating with, with Jareer. Yeah, um, that we, I was actually picking Ashley's brain about how you know, this horse has a tendency to approach a jump really well, but he can get a little flat over the jump, and the rider really had to use her body to get some of that upward momentum, some upward propulsion rather than just forward, and Ashley explained how that's done. What I like to see also is there was some fair managing going on there with with the, the rider and the horse responded really well, but also there were not a lot of big movements and huge adjustments, it all looked steady. So uh, to an untrained eye, again, looks like she's just sitting there and enjoying the ride around, but if you, you can pick it apart and see all the little changes that are being made and all the adjustments on both horse and rider to make that pretty picture. I'd have to say 14-year-old McKenna O'Neill has a big future ahead of her. Absolutely. Now in the ring, we have rider number 2215, Raise Them Up, ridden by Christina Aaron from Aledo, Texas, a horse that's competing in show jumpers and dressage. A six-year-old Gray Gelding that had 24 starts on the track, three wins, six top three finishes, racing all the way from the northeast in New York down to the south in Louisiana and retiring in Oklahoma almost a year ago to the date, October 21st, 2020. One of the things that I read, because riding a thoroughbred for racing and for 
say show jumping or eventing is very different but one of the commonalities is that it's about making those adjustments with short movements that you see the jockeys and you can speak to this donna the way they get the most out of their horse it's not a, a quick pull of the rein it's, it's sometimes just a tiny little uh, release in the finger and, and also then with the show jumping that you're not making any quick adjustments but just you know a slight shift in weight from the left to the right or you know bringing your shoulders back a couple inches the horses can feel that and can respond to that if they know what you're asking them well the most sensitive horse I ever rode was a Philly named Serena Song. She actually um, wow. <laughs> was a, quite a high earner and quite famous at the time, but she was definitely the most sensitive horse I ever rode. And when you would ride her in a race or in a morning workout and you needed her to go just a little bit faster, if you moved a finger, she would go way too fast. And so you had to just sniffle. You would go, just sniffle, just a little bit. Because and if she you picked moved, up on that. If you moved your body, if you moved a finger, if you touched her with the riding crop, she would just take off. And if you wanted just a little bit of speed, you had to give her just a little bit of an indication. How did you figure out that that was a good signal to her, that that, that was the vocabulary that you both understood? I had to go to the lowest signal I could possibly come up with because everything else was too much. <laughs> it just took a little trial and error. I found some horses. Uh, respond to a change in breath. Yes, she was that way. Christina Aaron and raise them up. The final horse and rider to go in the show jumper discipline sponsored by XL Equine the leaders coming in to the finale it'll be number 2118 highest rank ridden by Camera Brown Allen who is from Fulton Missouri and is an assistant professor at Williams Woods University uh, USAJA certified trainer aboard this young five-year-old Bay Gelding highest rank a New York bred that ran in the state of New York until October 7th of 2020. The order of go in reverse order from fifth to first across the disciplines, although there are some adjustments in the jumper divisions depending upon who jumps at a higher height or a lower height. But looking at the standings, coming into the finals, the top three were separated by just 1.75 points. Um, the scoring a little bit different, as Ashley mentioned, in terms of, of how this is scored. But regardless, that, that's a very close standings. And to elaborate a little bit more on how specifically they're being scored, if you've ever gone and seen a true jumper, it is very black and white. What is your time? What are the faults? This one is completely um, up to judges' discretion where each jump and everything in between the jump is scored on a rate of rhythm, straightness, confidence, correct jumping form, and acceptance of riders' aid. Aids. So it's not just did they get over. Um, there are um, faults that are applied for a horse that knocks a rail, but just because you knock a rail, you can still uh, increase your score by having a very good ride in between and showing class, the, the class of your horse. M my favorite one is confidence. I, you want to see a, a horse that is confident moving up to the jump and again may still need um, some some cues and and uh, take uh, the aids from the rider which is another evaluation but we see horses from time to time that come in and, and are very nervous and and yes they're green but this shows you your evaluation so this horse has had three rails down do you feel like he has confidence and it's just a little green or do you feel like maybe he's a little confidence? casual i thought Casual is probably good on the confidence That's, scale, though. But sometimes it's too casual, <laughs> so, so there's yeah, overconfidence. I, he's 
obviously there's going to be some points taken away because there were three rails dropped, but there was nothing that made this horse look like he was overwhelmed, nervous, wasn't sure how to jump. Again, just a little casual, gets a little flat, uh, might be a little bit with um, not quite listening to the aids or the aids were a little quiet. So there are going to be some adjustments on that. Do you see the horse in the arena right now? He's doing that Zenyatta walk. Yes, he wants to keep going. <laughs> he looks quite happy. Confident, if you will. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the scores that have been coming in for our last three riders, 75.9, 75.88, So Camara Brown Allen and highest rank and for those tuning into the thoroughbred makeover may be more proficient in other disciplines the difference in purpose of how you want to ride from that first show jumping round to the second show jumping round there are a number of different they call them tables in jumping and you can have uh, one on how fast you're going this is on optimum time so it's really important to have that nice steady rhythm and they were given a specific optimum time and your goal is to get as close to that the other one you want to show the rideability you might even want to show some different adjustments in there to show lengthening and shortening of stride and honestly I think this might be a horse that if you put the jumps up he probably would have had less rails Camara Allen Brown from Fulton Missouri aboard highest rank the final horse and rider to go in the show jumper discipline sponsored by XL Equine. Now we have the award ceremony for the show jumper discipline sponsored by XL Equine. There are some special awards to give out before we pin the ribbons for the top 10 and uh, an award that's particularly near and dear to my heart, the Iron Horse Award, because it recognizes the Iron Horses, sponsored by Mid-Atlantic Horse Rescue, the Iron Horse Award awarded to the highest place Iron Horse, that's a horse fold for this class of 2021 in 2011 or earlier, so 10 years old or earlier, they'll receive a $500 cash prize and trophy cooler for the highest placed horse trained by an amateur or professional, as well as $500 and a trophy cooler awarded to the highest placed horse trained by a junior. And the special award for the Iron Horse Award goes in this division to Aiken Prep and Emma Eyre, number 2005. Aiken Prep, the 10-year-old that made the finals and jumped at the height of three foot three. The other special awards for this discipline, the Thoroughbred Charities of America Award to the horse acquired through a TCA accredited organization. It goes to Thin Spaces and Susan Thomas, number 2274. And the Best Conditioned Award sponsored by Nina Bonney goes to Aiken Prep and Emma Eyre, number 2005. Outside of the top Five, we had the top team winner, and that is Rocky Roma for Team Brandywine Stable in this show jumper discipline, number 2221. And now we can recognize the top 10 and welcome them back into the ring. And after we pin the ribbons, we will then invite all our horses and riders to do a victory lap. Finishing in 10th place, number 2010, American Star, ridden by Michelle Mattel. Ninth place went to number 2003, Absolute Drama, and Emily Clayton. In 8th place, number 2274, Thin Spaces, and Susan Thomas. Seventh place, number 2296, Variegated, and Cody Campbell. In sixth place, number 2169, Margie's Band, and Katie Purdy. Now to the top five that we saw competing today. In fifth place, number 2118, 
highest rank and Kamara Brown Allen. Fourth place, number 2299, Victor Show, ridden by Marina Yarbrough, and that is the top finishing amateur in the division. The third place finisher and also the top junior, number 2139, Jarir and McKenna O'Neill. Second place, number 2005, Aiken Prep and Emma Ayer. And the winner of Show Jumper at the Mega Makeover for the class of 2021 with the score of 238.90, number 2215, raise them up, and Christina Aaron. <laughs> Congratulations to the top 10, and now we invite Christina and raise them up to lead this great group of horses around the TCA covered arena for a victory lap. Like yesterday, all of the discipline winners will return at the end of the day and we'll have a tremendous collection of OTTBs inside the TCA covered arena across the disciplines, the first one eventing all the way to ranch work at the end and they'll be vying for the support of all of you for the People's Choice Award sponsored by Achieve Equine and also the Thoroughbred Makeover Champion Award presented to the winner across all disciplines as voted on by all of the judges who have judged each of the respective disciplines at the makeover. And that Thoroughbred Makeover Champion Award is sponsored by Churchill Downs 